ladies and gentlemen, welcome for our today's session. So in our session today, we are going to look at, uh, our topic is still nationalism and decolonization. And our subtopic is mass nationalism in Ghana. In our previous lesson, we looked at forms of decolonization, whereby we looked at three forms of decolonization, and then we looked at uh, decolonization through peaceful means, whereby we have started looking at uh, Tanganyika as one of the countries that was decolonized through peaceful means or constitutional means. So we looked at uh, 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 we looked at the reasons why Tanganyika got independence earlier than Kenya and Uganda. And today we are going to look, focus on the second African country that also received independence through peaceful means, means which is Ghana. So our main focus is mass nationalism in Ghana. So uh, Ghana, uh, mass nationalism in Ghana was started as early as 1940s uh, with the formation of political parties. So we find that um, the political parties formed included a party known as UGCC. UGCC in full means United Gold Coast Conversion. And this party was formed by somebody known as J.D. Dankwa. And uh, um, Kwame Nkrumah uh, became the General Secretary of, 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 of United Gold Coast Conversion Party. And this party was formed in 1947. This party therefore became the uh, uh, we find that uh, this party uh, was formed by Dangwa and uh, the general secretary, as we have stated, was known as Kwame Kuruma. It was formed with the, the main objective of <coughs> introducing, it was formed due to the introduction of the Bans constitution, which was introduced by the British government. So this constitution was meant to restrict the African members from forming laws that could govern, could govern Africans, especially in Ghana. So uh, this uh, party, therefore, was opposed to was opposed to the, the was opposed to the British way of restricting Africans and uh, the members of the party not to form laws that would enable the Africans in Ghana to acquire freedom and hence independence. Then also the second party, another second party was also formed in 1948. So this party was known as CPP, in full meaning Conversion People's Party. So this was formed by a radical group. This group had broken out or broken away from a, a UGCC, which was the first party. And this was now under the leadership of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. So you find that the main reason why this party, the, that, the, the reason why CPP was formed, it was formed due to the introduction of Kosi Constitution in 1948. So this Kosi Constitution was introduced, uh, uh, but uh, you find the CPP, it was introduced by the British, and the CPP were against this Kosi Constitution. Although Kosi Constitution also, uh, it provided for the increase of the African representation at, at, the legal, or at the legislative council. So it was also formed with an aim of, of acquiring independence for Ghana especially. Uh, the results that made Ghana gain her independence earlier. So before that, find that Ghana is one of the African countries that acquired independence earlier. So Ghana is, uh, got, received its independence in 1957. So we find that there are several reasons here that made Ghana to gain her independence earlier than other African nations. So the first reason is that Ghana had a strong and good leadership under Kwame Nkrumah. He managed to unite all Africans in Ghana to fight for independence. So I find that Kwame Nkrumah uh, was a good leader in Ghana and from time to time 
the alliance with other African leaders to ensure that Ghana uh, received her independence through peaceful means. And we find that uh, therefore uh, Ghana became uh, motivated other African nations also to seek independence. So we find that uh, uh, therefore uh, due to this good, leader, good, good leadership skills therefore Ghana managed to acquire independence uh, and because of also it also managed to unite Africans in Ghana hence acquiring independence earlier. The second point is that there was no tribalism in Ghana, being that there was absence of tribalism or there was absence of tribal, tribal differences in Ghana made all people to be united under one party, CPP, uh, to fight against colonialism. So the uh, third point is also that uh, being that in Ghana the, there was absence of white settlers. Hence because Ghana was majorly, uh, Ghana was majorly a plantation dominant colony. And therefore because of that you find that there, there were no white settlers or uh, white settlers, Europeans living in Ghana. Hence therefore the the Ghanaians uh, and nationalists had no reason to, they, they had no reason kind of to use violence means in, in seeking independence and therefore also it was also easier uh, for the Ghanaians to get independence since there were no white settlers who would oppose, uh, oppose the liberation movements. Uh, so therefore, CPP got it easy as a party to move Ghanaians towards independence. So we are going to move to our fourth point. So our fourth, fourth point is that the use of English as a common language, that English as a common language in Ghana was spoken by nearly every Ghanaian. So this enabled the, the, the CPP as a party uh, to sell her policies and these policies were embraced by all the Ghanaians. So this enabled uh, uh, CPP as a party to acquire independence uh, in Ghana. So our fourth, fifth point is that there was also a good transport system that uh, due to good transportation network and a good infrastructure such as railway uh, road network, this enabled the African nationalists in Ghana to move about selling the party's policies and hence this also contributed towards Ghana getting her independence earlier than Kenya and earlier than uh, other African nations, including Kenya and, U and Uganda. Then uh, our sixth point is that uh, there are clear policies or ideologies that Ghana had clear policies which enabled her to attain her independence earlier. So we have a uh, Convention People's Party. Convention People's Party also uh, had very clear policies, uh, including uh, they, they had a slogan. So this slogan was known as Send Government Now. So the slogan was clearly understood by the people of Ghana and especially uh, within the party. So it was a movement. Uh, so therefore, CPP as a movement uh, found support uh, in order to uh, send the party's policies due to the clear policies they had put in place. So therefore, this uh, slogan, uh, which was referred to as the slogan uh, that uh, self-government now. So the slogan was clearly understood by the Ghanaians and therefore CPP as a party received support, hence acquiring independence for the Ghanaians.